Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? My name is Mel. Welcome to Holmes Law. If you're new, this is all about conduit bending. I have a lot of conduit bending content on YouTube. Um, I also do podcasts. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get started. So, basically, I'm here to expound on the quote that I actually love to repeat, okay? And I tell this to my apprentices. I tell this to even mechanics, okay? And that is just because you know how to bend doesn't mean that you always should bend your conduit, okay? And I want to expound upon that, you know, and I want to elaborate. I want to let you know exactly what I mean, okay? And um, this doesn't mean <clears throat> that, you know, you should actually apply that all the time, okay? And I'm going to explain what I mean, all right? So through the years of me bending conduit, which have been quite a few, all right, I've noticed and I've just, you know, I started to pull back on bending every single time, you know, I could, you know, when you first start bending, you start getting very, you know, uh, how would you say it, proud of your skills and, and you just want to, you know, make all these fancy bends and, and make all these bends on one stick of, of pipe or whatever the case may be, you know. And, and and I get that because you're just starting to learn how to bend and you want to, you know, you want to show off your skills and whatnot, all right? But the best way to show off your skills and let, you know, your foreman or whoever know, another worker know that you actually have skills, <clears throat> excuse me, is to try your hardest to have clean work. And clean work means, you know, straight, parallel conduit runs, you know, as straight as possible, you know, that's why I always say it in some of my videos, you know, try to keep the same elevation, okay, and for as straight as possible, for as long as possible, okay, number one, it, it, it makes your job and, and work look clean as hell, number two, it saves you a lot of time on having to, you know, bend conduit, take measurements, you know, set up your laser or, or whatnot, you know, so that's, <clears throat> those are some really good, you know, reasons not to, you know, bend your conduit, you know, and, but most importantly, it just makes it look, you know, clean. All right. Now, with that said, there are some times when, you know, you, you're definitely going to have to make bends because there's no other option. Okay. Now, mostly, you know, if it's possible to, in a, to avoid an offset let's say, <clears throat> and it makes your, your your run look a lot cleaner by putting maybe a Kindorf or a support some, somehow so that you don't have to make an offset, then by all means, you know, do that. Put a support so that you don't have to bend an offset. Now, you do have to, you know, weigh that out. Is it going to take more time for me to build a support or is it going to be quicker for me to build an offset? You're going to have to weigh those options out and see what's more important. You know, you know, is it important for me to finish this job or is it more important for this to look, you know, better? Do I have time to build my support and make it look good and clean? You know, is it going to be in an exposed area? You know, that's another thing. Okay, am I doing multiple runs on the same rack? Am I going to have to bend 10 offsets instead of just one? You know, is it quicker, quicker for me to just put a support? That's basically w what I'm trying to say. You know, on a lot of runs, it just looks so much cleaner when you just have straight runs with 90 degree bends. You know, even to go into a panel, okay, if, if it's better to just put a support where you don't have to do a box set into your panel, then then so be it. Put a put a kind off. This way it just goes straight in. You know, there's no there's no offsets, you know, whatever the case may be. I've seen a lot of work out there where, you know, you have a lot of different people working on, you know, bringing in conduits to a certain panel. So you have different offsets and they all look different, you know, and it just looks tacky. It looks, you know, kind of messed up. So it's just better for the first person that gets to that panel. Just put a kind off this way. Nobody has to bother.
doing an offset into the panel and it can go straight in. Like I said, this all depends. It's not always going to work out this way, but you know, it, it, you just have to weigh out your options. So that's basically what I mean when I'm saying in my quote, you know, just because you know how to bend doesn't mean that you always should. I wanted to clear that up because the other day on Instagram, I put, you know, that quote up and I got a big response on people wanting me to expound on the actual topic and, and break down what I actually meant. This is what I'm actually mean by that. When you become an experienced conduit bender, what I call a conduitologist, okay, you you'll stand out because you know what, you're going to try your hardest to keep that pipe clean. You know what I mean? You're going to, it's going to be a clean run and you're going to have minimal bends on, on those runs. Okay. Like I said, this all depends from job to job. Okay. But, um, that's basically when you know, when you've actually reached that level of experience okay when you're when you're just you know you're trying to look for the route that's going to give you the straightest route and you, you're trying to find that elevation where you don't have to you know dodge any obstructions at all okay that's when you know that you've gotten to you know a level of conduitologist you know what i mean an experienced conduit master bender okay because when you first start learning like i said before you want to you, you want to bend every single you want to bend around every obstruction you know you, you're so eager to to get on that bender and just you know make these make these fancy bends like i said you don't have to waste your time on that bender put your time into planning your route and finding the best route where you can keep your runs clean straight you know, minimal bends, 90s if you have to, you know, and even then, if you can put a box, a junction box, or a condolet, so that it saves you from doing, you know, kicks, you know, offsets, or saddles, or whatnot, then, you know, install them, you know, if, if it, if it lets you do that, if you're in an area where you can put boxes, you know, and it's going to be exposed and accessible, then do it, you know. Um, this is just something that I've learned over the years, okay. And um, it's helped me. It saves time and it makes your work look clean, okay. This is something that I'm passing on to you guys. That's how I know and that's how I judge when I meet another conduit bender. Okay, when I see that he's taking his time, you know, to plan out his run and whatnot, then I know, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. I don't just judge him on whether he knows how to bend or not because, you know, okay, granted, these days there, there are not too many people that know how to actually bend, but that's not how I judge you. It's, if you know how to bend a saddle, a four-point saddle, you know, and whatnot, you should know how to do that if you're bending conduit. You know, if you have a hand bender in your hand and you have a, 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 a length of conduit, then you should know what you're doing, okay, and whatnot. But whether you're a good conduit bender or not, that's how I actually, you know, figure out if you're a good bender from a great bender, okay, is if you take the time to plan your run, and try to get that run as straight as possible for an elevation that's going to let you do that all the way from A to B. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Guys, I'm going to let you go on this one. But uh, I have more content coming. Conduit Bending content. I'm also doing podcasts now, as you can see. I'm also changing it up a little bit to electrically related topics as far as, you know, the mechanical installations part of the uh the trade as well if you guys have any questions on anything as far as conduit bending installations anything at all just you can join my discord or you can drop the questions on instagram facebook i'm also on tiktok reddit okay uh you can drop them on any social media best way to get in contact would be to join my discord server Holmes law if you can send me a message i'll send you your own link and you can join that way as well uh, guys, my name is Mel, and this is Holmes Law, and I'm out.